Well, there were so many people who were, who were really passionate about dance and who were trying to make it possible, I guess I would say, for people to um, to dance, to make money dancing, to be able to be an artist for their career rather than to be a, you name the job, and an artist on the side. And, and I think that that was um, where we finally were heading as Portland, Sta as Portland Dance Theater developed. But, um, and I guess we all sort of hoped for it at the start. But mm -hmm. in the beginning, it was, we were just a bunch of dance um, sort of orphans that, who gathered at Portland State. Mm -hmm. um, it was the Vietnam era. And um, I was living at home with my parents while my then husband was doing his tour of duty. And Bonnie arrived from um, wherever they arrived from, but she's from Salt Lake City originally. Jan Dreyer was here. Kathy Evolution arrived from parts south, I think, California, but, you know, she'd been at, uh, in the Peace Corps and had been a dancer her whole life. So we were all there, and Vonda Carter was there, and we, so we danced with her for a while. And I'm not so sure what happened when I went away, because I went away for six months, but when I came back, Vonda was gone. And then we were really orphans. Mm -hmm. And so there we were one day, and we just said, well, why don't we just get together and make some dances? I remember there was a closet in the back of the, of the, the gym slash studio where we had, uh, had done our work and had our, our classes at Portland State, and we were all messing around with some costumes, and we just hatched the idea there. And so then the question was, where would we rehearse? And um, for a while we worked at Portland State, I think, but then we, it, it became obvious that we had to separate ourselves from Portland State. I think by then Kathy was on the faculty at Portland State, and we couldn't ride on the goodwill that Portland State had towards Kathy anymore. Um, so we searched around and we found space at what is now Hillside Center, which was the old Catlin Gable School. And we shared that space with some great people. Um, my own particular background was that I studied ballet as a child with William Christensen, as did Bonnie, uh, in Salt Lake City. And then I came to Portland and I studied ballet out in Beaverton with Anita Pianovi, who's another person maybe you should call. Um, she had a ballet studio out there. And then I did dance team in high school. And then I went to college and I quit for um, three years. Then various things happened and I found myself at Portland State. Um, finishing my degree in French and trying to figure out how to fill up my spare time. Uh -huh. And so um, that's when I discovered modern dance, when Vonda was there. And Vonda was a, a, an amazing teacher, um, very flamboyant and very demanding. And um, at that time, I, I knew so little about the current state of contemporary dance or modern dance. In those days it was modern dance because we had just come out of the deeply uh, Martha, Martha, Martha time. And <clears throat> so Jan Dreyer, Jan McCauley, had been at um, she'd been at some conservatory. Boston Conservatory of Music, 
something like that, and had studied dance with some of the great um, dance choreographers and performers of, of that early 70s time, but um, or even the 60s. So we just got busy trying to figure out how to make dances. And Jan had studied choreography, but none of the rest of us, I, I think, had. We had all been in dances, and, and so I think, at least for me, that was my best clue about how to make a dance. But that was when the whole dance world was exploding about how, how do we make a dance and what is a dance, and, and that's when the whole thing about anything, anything can be a dance mm -hmm. if you call it a dance, and anything could be art if you called it art too. So it was all happening around the same time. So we just got busy choreographing and, and figuring out ways to show our work. And um, it was a time when there was a lot of uh, federal money, grant money, so we could get funded to do a tour. And so, as I'm sure you've heard from the various other people you've talked to, we, we made dances, we performed with the young audiences um, in the local area the, with the Clifton Trio, John May, John Bunce, and Audrey May. Um, John May was a flautist, John Bunce was a guitarist, John May, I mean, Audrey May, I'm not sure what she, she was a violist, I think. And so we, you know, we would get some money for that. We would get, um, and it was all about getting enough money to keep us going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we worked at, um, at Hillside for quite a while and then they were gonna tear it down. Or maybe they weren't going to tear it down. I can't remember. And then we moved our base of operations down to a place which is now an architect's office. The offices of a very famous architect named uh, Klepfel. I can't remember his first name. Um, anyway, down in uh, inner or uh, sort of outer southeast near Lincoln High School. And um, it was the philosophy of the group that we would would all share the responsibilities. We all wanted to perform, we all wanted to choreograph, and nobody wanted to do the administration work, <laughs> so we all took on some of that, too. Yeah. I think in the end, um, most of that did fall on Jan Dreyer, mm. because she was the best at it. I mean, and I think, I think in situations like that, one person being good at it and um, the difficulties with sharing responsibilities like that make it kind of inevitable. So we, that's what we did. We, and then Greg Bielmeyer had come into the picture. We were so happy to have a male body um, because uh, most of modern dance really was developed on women, by women, early modern dance. And um, we, we felt we needed to balance out all the estrogen with some testosterone, plus we wanted to do lifts. In those days, women weren't lifting each other. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So um, uh, we hadn't had uh, contact imp improvisation yet. So it was a, it was a wonderful time. Um, as with all groups, our group had its conflicts, um, had its egos, had its difficulties, our financial difficulties. But, I mean, it was, it was a great time. We, we just let ourselves explore all the ideas that anybody was interested in. We all taught classes and we, we learned how to be better teachers. Um, my first teaching experience was actually from Vonda Carter when I was um, taking classes from her at Portland State. She said, oh, I've been teaching out at OES and um, I, I really don't have the time to do it. Um, I think you could do it. Wow. And, and I went, but I've never taught a class. And she said, oh, you'll be fine. You'll figure it out. And so I really bit, 
pretty much spent the rest of my life figuring out how to be a, a good teacher. Um, so the, I'll never forget how I went into that first class with all these high school kids just going, I'm so scared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, how to teach. I know how to dance, but I don't know how to teach. It really is a so, lifetime pursuit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just to um, clarify, uh, the kind of the beginning of dance for you was being a student at PSU, and then through PSU you got connected with Portland Dance Theater? I got or... connected with the people who be, we be, decided to become Portland Dance Theater. Got yeah. it. We decided to be Portland Dance Theater. They, it was uh, Bonnie and Jan and me, and then Greg Either Greg was there at the early times or at the right at the beginning or he came soon after and then Judy Patton moved to town and so we recruited Judy and so that was us it was just the five of us early on wow. and were you uh, uh, like a, a college student at the time or were you just taking the classes as somebody that had just uh, like looking for dance class and PSU happened to offer some dance classes by then, I had, by the time we became Portland Dance Theater, I had graduated from college and come back after a, a military hiatus, mm -hmm. a military-associated hiatus. Right. And that was the six months where... Um, where I went away and, and then Vonda... Disappeared dis in disappeared. that half yeah. year. Okay, that makes sense. And so, about, what, uh, um, about when, uh, when did Portland Dance Theater, when was that moment where people kind of came together and said, hey we should be a modern dance company. I think it was 1969. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 1969. Yeah. So, um, or 1970 at the latest, but uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so um, we just did that. We, we toured around, we went, we toured to Washington, uh, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, California, I think. They went to Nevada, but I think that was after I left the company. But I stayed with the company for seven years. Wow. So, um, and by the end of the seven years, I was, I was, uh, maybe you won't put this in, I was divorced. <laughs> But I, um, I just uh, felt I needed a, a better way of making a living. And I was mm -hmm. tired of touring around and sharing hotel rooms and um, always wondering, you know, if I was going to have money in my bank account. So yeah. I, um, I said, well, I'm going to give it one more chance. And I went to New York for a summer. Because I said, if I'm if I'm going to dance, I want I want to see if I could dance in New York because New York is the center of, or was the center of everything in those days. But I think it isn't now. I mean, I think they think they are the center, but they uh, but I feel dance has gotten much more dispersed. Serious dance has gotten much more dispersed, and um, so I went and. I realized that New York was just too hard of a life for me. I, I, I was actually pretty clear-eyed about my inability to really take that hard city living, and um, I'm I'm sorry. I, uh, somebody's outside. Right. He's walking by. Um, so I came back to Portland and I said, I'm going to, I'm done. I'm not going to dance. I'm going to do anything else. So what did you do? I couldn't figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> so, um, I knew I didn't want to be in business. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I don't want her to die. The interview? Yes, mailman's coming. That's true. That's true. Tennessee, you're just, you're being too hard, okay? I'll be right back, Pat. Sorry. Okay. Um... 
So you came back. So I came back and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. But I thought, well, while I'm figuring it out, I, I can still make money teaching dance. So I, I used to teach at um, PCC where I could make like $20 an hour, which was pretty good. And I, uh, uh, which campus were you at? Right, various PCC. campuses all over. All huh. over. Um, and well, I was getting pretty good at teaching by then. And I heard there was a job opening at Reed. So I thought, whoa, that sounds really good. Um, I could maybe get a pretty good gig there and that would give me kind of a foundation and I it was only a part-time job half-time and when I called that Judy I talked to Judy Massey who was my dear friend and colleague for mentor for many years 30 plus years and um, she said oh we've just filled the position but please send me your CV and um, I'll keep it on file in case something comes up. So I returned to figuring out what I was going to do next. And after a couple of weeks, she called me back. And it turned out that the person who was going to take the job had changed her mind. I think she was a, one of the Cunningham dancers who probably just couldn't cut ties with New York. Anyway, so... Um, I went over, I auditioned, talked to a few people, and was hired, 1975. And um, I retired from Reed in 2009. So it was, it was a wonderful part of my dance career. I really, in my heart of hearts, only wanted to be a performer and still to this day if I could fix all my ailments and be a performer I would do it but I lo loved teaching at Reed and I mostly loved the Reed students um, I had considered becoming uh, going back to school and becoming a doctor because my family had doctors um, and when that was getting serious, I was teaching at Reed, and I thought, well, every day I go to Reed, and I walk into a studio where I have utter control over what I'm going to do, and people who come to me are coming out of joy. They are coming voluntarily. They um, are doing creative and wonderfully energetic and beautiful things. If I go into medicine, what will I face every day? People who are coming to me for help, who are sick. Creative kids, the sick people, the creative people, the sick people, I chose the creative people. No money, but plenty of joy. So, um, and looking back on it, I'm, I couldn't have made a better choice, I'm sure, mm. of it. So I taught half time and by then I was married and had um, my first child in 1979, my second child in 1982. Because of the way Reed was set up, I, um, I raised my own children. And I, as I said, I had utter control over what I was gonna teach. Judy was the best colleague anyone could have ever had. Um, she mentored me and she encouraged me and she never bossed me or bullied me. Um, and she always listened to my ideas and put most of them into play. So um, while I was at Reed, I really now was, I was married and I had a job and, and I wasn't performing and I, I mostly choreographed on the Reed students. I didn't really choreograph professionally. Um, I think I did a couple things for the PSU students, but that was that was about it. But I did teach some classes at PSU and I taught Min Tron when he was in, um, he was uh, in his early days at PSU. Mm -hmm. 
uh, during my teaching time at Portland Community College, I taught Vincent Martinez, who you know as Vin Marti. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, I had my fingers in, in the um, aesthetic birth, births, or part of the aesthetic births of, of at least those two gentlemen. And I thought, well, now that I'm at Reed and, and I'm, I'm fairly stable, although I will say that I was on a two-year renewable contract and my job was in jeopardy literally every other year um, because of the way Reed was set up. Uh, I forget where I was going with that. Uh, more, a little more stability at Reed. Oh yeah, so I decided that I would make it my mission to help the dancers who were in Portland struggling by bringing them to campus and giving them what jobs I could. So over the years I invited many of the people, Mary, Judy, Greg, Bonnie, Tony Holt came, um, I can't even think of the, the full list. Um, not that I gave them full-time jobs, but I, you know, I paid them well for their services. They taught our students. I, I brought in their vision to, to these impressionable college students. And I mean, I think every, everybody was better for it. I mean, at least I hope so. That was certainly my aim. Um, Linda K. Johnson I brought, um, uh, Josie Mosley. Josie mm -hmm. Mosley was one of the people who was discovered and nurtured by Judy Massey mm -hmm. um, in her early dance career. So um, that was really my, what I considered my, my duty to the, the Portland dance scene. And I will say, um, you probably never knew me when you were working with Mary, because I, I kind of disappeared. I only had enough energy to do three full-time jobs, mm -hmm. which was teach at Reed. I mean, it was technically a half-time job, but uh, raise my children and run my home. So I, I disappeared off the Portland dance scene. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I went, I do, I did go to concerts back in, in those days, but um, other than that, you know, so that's, yeah. that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I, I think that is a, a choice that a lot of people that are going and uh, uh, teaching jobs, like I, I feel myself balancing the same thing as I get more involved in teaching dance. How do I, where are my priorities and how much energy do I have to fulfill right. those priorities? Where are you teaching? Uh, I teach at Lewis and Clark. Oh, okay. you're teaching at Lewis and Clark. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, I've got a, um, but it's like a one year renewable contract there and they've scheduled me. Absolutely. You yeah. know, they have a plan for like the next five years, like, oh, we want you to teach this in like the fall of like 2018. and. But I'm like, that's great. How about a five-year contract? And like, no, no, sorry. You're just for your position. We just have one-year con. So yeah, I'm, it's the uh, same same story, different different school, different time, but it's the same right. uh, strategies for cost effectiveness. Right. Well, I will say that um, for years, Judy and I lobbied for more FTEs in the dance department, and. Um, when she actually uh, achieved the half an FTE for my initial job, someone in on the faculty um, announced in the in the fa full faculty meeting that if we were going to put money towards this position, maybe we should put money towards underwater basket weaving too. Wow. And over the years, as I uh, became more and more comfortable at Reed, because at first I was terrified. I knew everyone was smarter than I was, and, and I didn't, you know, and I knew people's attitudes toward dance. Yeah. Although I knew my students loved it. 
and the people who were in our building were joyful. The rest of the campus was, oh, we are so stressed, we are so stressed. But in our building, it was like, we are joyful. Mm -hmm. And it and so um, it was a struggle to kind of make the re help the rest of the faculty understand that we weren't just a service, we weren't just for relieving stress. And so Judy and I, you know, always had st students take technique, compose dances, and write about what they had seen or what they had done. And that's how we justified our legitimacy on, on a liberal arts campus. But it was my, it was my mission actually to uh, make dance better known in the faculty. And so as I became more comfortable, I got to know more people and sort of help them to come over and see dance and understand that dancers also use their brains Dancers, um, dancers write, dancers, dancers compose. Um, maybe making a dance phrase equals making a sentence or is analogous to. And um, people would say, oh, I had never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And so more and more dance achieved legitimacy on the Reed campus. And I think because Judy was much more shy than I was, it was my job to do that, my mission. And so we got another half an FTE. So then we had two FTEs. And um, I think that was after Judy had retired. And Carla and I at the time, Carla was my student. Oh, wow. Yes. And then she was my accompanist. And then she was my colleague. Look at that. <laughs> and she and I decided at the time to, instead of making two full-time jobs, that it would be better for our students to have more different faces in the department. So we went for one full-time and two half-time jobs. And that was a huge sacrifice for Carla because that meant that she would still be half time because by then I was the full time person. Mm -hmm. And I will say that after 27 years on the faculty and me bringing it to the attention of our president Colin Diver that it was probably, it was possibly illegal and probably immoral for them to have kept me in limbo, in employment limbo for all of these years. I was granted tenure and full professorship in the Reed faculty after 27 years. And it just, uh, it caught me utterly by surprise. I had no idea they were doing it. They did not ask me for a dossier, they just finally did the right thing. And so I had been planning to retire, but I stayed on a few more years. Um, and yeah, I mean, we were, we were in a, a, a really great position to, um, to bring our students to Whitebird. And, you know, we had a great collaboration with the Whitebird people. Um, and uh, made use of, of all of their videos that they, and DVDs that they had in their library and, and collaborated with them early on to bring their guest artists onto our campus. So um, the biggest part of my dance life was at Reed. Yeah. And um, there you go. There you go. What about the, um, I know Reed had uh, summer programs that were really influential to people like Josie Mosley. Is that something that, um, that you can speak to, the, the summer sessions, uh, bringing in like uh, Graham teachers and Lamone teachers? Or did that happen kind of at a, a different uh, No, that period? happened while yeah. I was in the early days of my uh, employment at Reed. Uh, but I, I didn't, 
I was the beneficiary of, of all of that teaching. Mm -hmm. um, rather than any kind of a, an influence in having it happen. Judy and her husband and Keith Martin and some other people um, always produced it. Mm -hmm. And I just came along for the ride. Lucky me. What was it like to be taking a class there? Like, what was that experience like as a getting to just be a participant? Oh, well, I mean, it was extremely heady. I, I, you just, all these amazing teachers just descended on the campus and um, it was a smorgasbord of one wonderful thing after another. I took classes from Armgard, von Bartleben. At that point, I really felt I needed to learn um, Graham technique. Uh, I did take some Limon. I can't remember. I think it might have been Jim May who taught the Limon. I can't remember who else came out and that I took classes with. Um, but it was just it was it was like a a gift from Judy to me. She said, "You come." You, you just take these classes and, and you do it for, for free. Wow. So Judy, um, Judy Massey was the most generous human being, well, right up in the constellation of most generous human beings I've known. Bonnie Merrill also belongs there. Um, the, the student uh, population from your memory at these classes uh, for the summer session, was it mainly Reed students or...? No, people came from all over the world. Wow. Literally all over the world. Dancers and teachers. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, of course, I wasn't living there. The ones who lived on campus got to have the full experience of, of, you know, the dorm life and, mm -hmm. and the social interaction. Um, I, I do remember, though, the first week of Graham Technique left me absolutely cri crippled. I could barely walk. Have you done Graham Technique? A little bit. It's intense. Oh, dear. It is intense. Yeah. Um, wow. I, what are some ways that you saw the effect of these teachers and students coming from all over the world to Portland ripple out uh, into the, to affect Portland for the rest of the year. Uh, was there uh, an effect uh, about all these people coming in or did it just feel more like an isolated event that happened and then everybody dispersed? I think it felt like, it felt like an isolated event. I actually do not know, uh, other than Josie, um, a, of local people who would come to those classes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there were local people. Right. Um, but one of the things that we used to say to convince the Reed administration to try to keep this thing going was um, that we were sure that the fact that this had been at Reed and the fact that Reed not only had a beautiful um, campus and a, and a lot of facilities for this, but the 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 fact that Reed even existed and allowed this to happen was good publicity for Reed. Mm -hmm. Totally. And so um, so we use that on on the administration for you know for our own purposes. And I will say in the end, um, not only did we get Judy Massey's just for spite theater bill, not just for spite, but she used to say, we'll call the new theater the Judy Massey just for spite theater because nobody would build us a, a facility and we were, we were d teaching in a gym with a hard floor. Um, so we did get that performing arts building built and now they have a full dance major. When I got to read, it had a dance slash theater major which was one of the most difficult majors to accomplish in the college in terms of uh, needing to accumulate uh, requirements, classes, because you had to take almost a full major in theater and then almost a full major in dance. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we did graduate people who knew a lot about their performance mediums. Mm -hmm. So um, one of our graduates um, is, in re is, is in Eugene right now. Um, actually, she's, she's in one of these articles that, that you'll see. Um, she it has become actually known around the world for her teaching of early childhood dance. Oh, wow. Um, after she left Reed with her dance theater major, she and her husband ended up in New York and she studied at the New School and became very interested in early childhood education and dance. And now she, she's just a a powerful voice in in that part of Oregon. Who's this? Rachel Carnes is her name. And she met her husband Ben Brinkley, who's another Reed grad in dance class. So it's a sweet story. Yay dance. Um just one last thought about the summer uh program. When did that uh end? What was kind of the the cutoff on that? Oh I just I can't remember. That's I can try okay. to look it up. No worries, it's all right. And I know it's um, it's uh, it's it's uh, things things slide in, in time, and it's hard to keep every uh, like all the dates in your head. Well, it was after Mount St. Helens erupted. Okay. That was a summer that they were really worried. People were worried about coming to the summer dance workshop. They'd already paid their money and and signed up, and then Mount St. Helens erupted and and people didn't know if it was safe oh, wow. but they came anyway I think a few people didn't come but uh, most people came anyway and so that was 1980 yeah so I think it was a few years after that the reason it had to end was because Judy and Dick Tron her husband were mortgage taking out a second mortgage on their house to pay the upfront costs associated with putting on the workshop. They recouped it every single time, but they could not take the stress of it anymore, and the college was asking more and more for rent. The college was not really that friendly to dance in those days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it just, it just gives you some idea of Judy Massey's dedication mm -hmm. to dance and, and to that project. Yeah. And I think that's, you just hit on something that I think is uh, something that I really want people to understand is that these programs don't just happen. There's a lot of individuals that make a lot of personal sacrifice of time and finance and just like emotional <laughs> like right. space to be able to, to make something that's so beneficial happen. And then I, um, you know, run into so many different obstacles along the way. Uh, but that's, I feel, the backstory that's often hidden or forgot. Yep. And I feel that's really important uh, to remember and understand all that effort that happened so that uh, so that we can A, be realistic about what we're doing, but B, try to minimize that effort and know, know that like that was unsustainable asking people to like, take a second mortgage out of their house. That was just crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they had to fly everybody out here, all the dance artists. Mm -hmm. They had to pay for their lodging, they had to pay for some insurance, the college asked more and more and asked more and more rent. It was just, it was, it was too bad the college to take that position. But I think that they don't, I'm not sure what they do now. Because when I retired, I just stepped back. I thought I should, it was Carla's department now. Yeah. And I should not interfere. I wanted to say to you that there was somebody at the University of Oregon who was writing uh, articles and maybe she did a thesis. Anyway, you should check the University of Oregon about the, the history of dance in Portland. Oh, wow, great. I don't know who she was, but there was somebody who was doing that. Uh, it may have been as many as 10 years ago. Okay. But there's some thesis at the U of O about Portland dance history. Is it's there? What, yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. Or, or, okay. She was writing articles, and I uh -huh. and I heard she was thinking about writing 
something larger. So I don't know if it was part of a thesis project or or what. Interesting. You know, if she's working towards her master's or, or whatever. So. Cool. I will follow that lead up and uh, dig around and see what, what's there. Um, are there any other uh, thoughts that seem important? I mean, that was beautiful. That was a lot about Portland Dance Theater and Reed and Reed's impact on bringing in guest artists to the Portland dancers as well as bringing in other artists for Portland dancers to go to. That's all themes that I'm really interested in exploring in this film. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, just before we, we end, if there's any other thoughts or things that seem important, I want to make sure you have a chance to, uh, that we're not just glossing over or skipping anything that seems worth uh, talking about. Well, I will say to the college's credit that, um, that they are much more conscious of their responsibility to the greater Portland community all communities in Portland than they used to be. So I think that um, that there's there's more of a sense of um, participation of Reed in Portland. Um, and I know for sure that um, that the dance department at Reed is inviting Portland in more. They have a, a new um, faculty member named Victoria Fortuna, I think is her last name. Do you know her? I do. She's and she's stuff. doing that community dance project, which which I think is 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 really nice, um, and will help bring ideas that people seem to fear. Ideas about moving. How do I move my body? Mm -hmm. Can I move my body in any other way than what is utilitarian? Um, yeah. And what does that mean? You know, what does that feel like? And how does that enrich my life? And um, so I think I'm glad she's doing that. Mm -hmm. And getting a PhD position is a really, like, that's, a, I think, a very nice way to round out that department. It's a... Right. And it's a tenure track position, too. So we'll have possibly two tenured professors in in dance at Reed so that's and really a major. good that's a big deal and a major yeah yeah so that's 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 me and I um, I guess I'll just say that I feel like I was one of the lesser important people in the dance in Portland um, I never went out and became um, a choreograph a choreographer like Bonnie or like or like Mary certainly um, or Greg or any of them but it's my hope that I'm I made a, a contribution um, I yeah that's all I have to say about that <laughs> that sounds good and sounds maybe like a good place to end our yeah. recording yeah 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 um,